Welcome to my lecture online. Even though experimental evidence was beginning to prove out that Einstein was correct with the special relativity, as you move faster, time slows down, was there a way that we could actually measure it in an experiment? And it turned out in 1971, a few scientists, Afeli and Keating, actually put together an experiment to try to prove that it was actually correct. And they did, they did prove it. How it was done? Well, they used a series of what they call the HP 5061A cesium beam atomic clocks. They had 12 of them, I believe. They put four in one airplane, four in another airplane, and they put four on the Earth as a reference. Now, of course, the Earth rotates around its axis, so what we have to do is, relative to the motion of the plane moving in one direction, the other direction, the Earth moves as well, and we have to take all that into account. Looking from the north, from the north pole here, we can see the Earth rotates in a counterclockwise direction. So depending upon where they put the clock relative to the equator, they can actually calculate the speed of the clock as it goes around the Earth like this. What they did was they took one plane and made it fly eastward. In other words, it would fly along with the rotation of the Earth. And since the velocity of the plane is relative to the velocity of the Earth, you can then see that the total velocity of the plane would be additive. The speed of the plane or the speed of the clock on the plane is going to equal the speed of the Earth plus the speed of the plane. Another plane would fly in the opposite direction, would fly westward, and therefore the speed of the clock would be equal to the speed of the plane minus the speed of the Earth, so relative to space would travel a lot slower. So the clock on, or the set of clocks, on this plane flying westward would have the smallest velocity. The velocity of the clocks on the Earth would have the middle velocity, and the velocity of the clocks on this plane flying eastward have the greatest velocity, all relative to one another. Now, even though planes do not fly anywhere near the speed of light, they do fly relatively fast, hundreds of miles per hour, and therefore, with an atomic clock that can measure time very, very accurately, we should be able to notice a difference depending upon which direction the plane would fly. In other words, if this plane, or the clock in this plane, had the greatest velocity, it would show the smallest amount of time, or passage of time. This clock here, moving in the westward direction with the smallest velocity, would have the largest passage of time. The slower you move, the greater the passage of time, the faster you move, the smaller the passage of time. And of course, as a reference, we would have the clocks on the Earth, which should show a time between the two planes. Was the experiment successful? It was a tremendous success. Not only did they prove that the time passes on the clocks in this plane was smaller than the time passes of the clock on the Earth, they also showed that the time passage of the clocks in this plane was greater than the time passage of the clocks of the Earth. Not only that, Using the equations that we derived from, from the Lorentz transformations, we're able to show that the amount of difference was exactly according to the equations derived explaining the time uh, dilation due to the effects of the special relativity that Einstein talked about. And so, yes, this was a definitive experiment that definitively proved not only that time slows down when you start moving faster towards the speed of light, it also proved that the equations we're using were correct in determining what that change in the time lapse would be. So, 1971 was a tremendous experiment that showed that the equations of Einstein, the equations of Lorentz transformations, were actually correct. And Einstein was correct in saying that time slows down as the clock speeds up. And that's how we know.